I'm Joseph Sirosh. I'm a corporate vice president in the Artificial Intelligence and Research Group. Really excited to have all of you here at Connect. Every enterprise has an attic of data. They may not be as bad as this, but it may be digital, but still it is a completely unorganized clutter, and you've got to understand all of that. So the best way to show the power of what AI can do for a scenario like this is with a demo. So let me invite Coram Thompson, who's a, a, a principal engineer in my team, to show you how you can actually connect information up in uh, unstructured data and make a very, very powerful example out of it. Coram? Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thanks for joining us. On November 22nd, 1963, the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated. While driving through Dallas in this motorcade, he was shot by a lone gunman named Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, I mean, that's at least what the government wants us to believe, right? <laughs> Actually, this has been such a controversy around this uh, that 25 years ago, an act of Congress mandated that all the documents related to the assassination be released this year. Well, how many documents are we talking about here? Well, this first batch of documents contains about 34,000 pages. That's a stack of paper that's about 12 feet tall. And they just released in the last few days uh, another batch that's even bigger. And they're going to continue to release even more information. So are any of you guys curious about what's inside here? I, I, I know I am, right? And so I'm not really that into reading thousands of documents, personally. Uh, so how should we approach this, right? So what we find is that when you need to extract understanding from a deluge of documents, it's best to use a continuous process that allows you to ingest the raw documents, enrich them with structured information, and then be able to explore the data. Now, we found that a powerful pav pattern to do this in the cloud uh, is, to, is to use a pattern that we call cognitive search. This pattern feeds data into the cloud, applies a set of cognitive skills that extracts knowledge and stores them as annotations, and then creates new experiences exploring the data using search. Now, to illustrate this, um, what I've done is I've applied this pattern to the JFK documents. So join me as we open the JFK files. All right, this is the JFK files. It's a simple web application that I built using the AZ Search JS library that you can find on GitHub. Now, over here on the left, you can see that these are some of the annotations that are broken down and organized these documents that, that we've been able to extract from the documents. So right off the bat, you can tell that these documents are about JFK, the CIA, and the FBI. Now, I think we should just start from the beginning. Let's start with Oswald. Well, now look at this. Now, it takes us right into the place in each document where it mentions Oswald. Now, this is because an OCR skill annotated these documents with the text that it's extracted. And the cool thing is that it doesn't even matter if those documents are typed um, or if they're handwritten, such as in these cases. Now, you may have actually noticed uh, that one of these words, GP floor, um, is highlighted as well. Come on here. Um, now, that is, that is not a typo. Uh, in fact, uh, the CIA uses code words uh, when, uh, in a lot of their communications. And so GP floor is actually a CIA cryptonym for Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, this annotation was created by a custom skill that I created uh, that annotates these documents using a published list of code words um, that you can find on the internet. Now, what this does is it means that GP floor and Oswald are now treated as synonyms and so all of the results are now linked together. Uh, you may have also noticed uh, that in addition to documents, it returned back this image. This is because we used a computer vision skill that is able to understand the contents of this image, recognize Oswald's face, and provide a caption. In this case, the caption says, Lee Harvey Oswald posing for the camera. So I'm guessing this is his yearbook photo or something. All right, now we could just start reading these documents. 
Um, but what I'd rather do is I'd rather explore the relationships between these documents. And so to do, to do that, I'm going to open up this. And what you're looking at is you're looking at a visualization of terms that are within this document. Now, these terms were created by analyzing the entire, entire corpus of document in order to produce the topics and show the relationships. And so in this case, you can see that Oswald uh, is related. One of the relationships I find interesting over here is this cluster of relationships around Sylvia. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to dig more into that. And so let's pull up the documents related to just this intersection here. Uh, and so right off the bat, that uh, catches my eye, is this document here, which is a, uh, a sign, the original signed uh, uh, interrogation of Sylvia Duran by the Mexican government. And when I went through and I read this, I learned that Sylvia uh, worked at the Mexican con uh, the consulate, and she was Oswald's connection to the, KG the Russian KGB in Cuba. That's crazy. H how are the KGB involved in all of this? Well, let's find out. All right, so same thing. Let's see the relationships that the KGB has. You can see two big clusters here. One I'm not going to try to pronounce, so let's follow uh, Nosenko. Who is this Nosenko character? Um, so again, we're going to pull up all the documents related to Nosenko, but I don't really know who this guy is. Oh, and look at this. The linked entity skill is able to make a connection on this term to a Wikipedia article that exists. And so right away, I can, f I can learn that Yuri Nosenko was a KGB defector that was interrogated by the CIA. In fact, these documents are the transcript of his interrogation, including the audio recordings. Now, we could go dig into that and start reading about that and see where that takes us next, but I think you guys get the picture of what happens here. And that is that when the US government releases a secret cache of documents about the assassination of a president, you better hope that your name is not in there. <laughs> now, uh, fortunately, my name's not in there because I checked. Um, but interestingly, w the name of one of our products um, is in there. So SQL Server, no, SQL Server, <laughs> SQL Server didn't assassinate the president, um, but it was used uh, by the CIA in 1997 in order to manage these same exact documents uh, that I'm showing you today. And they were actually kind enough uh, to provide this wonderful architecture diagram <laughs> right, of the system that they built that shows the use of secure modems and phone lines, and they use some fantastic clip art. And so I thought it'd be good to compare this um, against the architecture of the system that I just showed you right now. I decided, though, I'm going to reuse their classified C uh, CIA clip art, though. So, so the way the system works is that when the documents are uploaded into the cloud in the blob storage, it then triggers an Azure function an Azure function that I built <laughs> that implements a cognitive skill set. And this skill set contains that custom skill I mentioned that uh, applies those code words, but it also those other skills that use cognitive services, such as computer vision, OCR, handwriting, and entity linking in order to extract that information. And that the knowledge extracted from these skills is stored as annotations in Cosmos DB and put into Azure Search. Now, we also use Azure Machine Learning we use Azure Machine Learning in order to read all of the document annotations and to produce and extract those topics at a corpus-wide uh, annotation. And those, as well, end up in the search index, and that I could explore it uh, visually, like you saw, and um, using the AZ search. And this guy, he's just happy to be here. All right, so um, why don't we just dig into one of those pieces? I'm sure you're curious what the code looks like. So let's take a look now at... Uh, at the code for the Azure function. This is where all of the, the interesting stuff is going on. So let me just zoom in here. OK, so this is the Azure function that reads the blob, is triggered whenever a blob um, is executed. And you can see here, the first thing we do is we parse these PDF documents um, into images. And then we create and apply this cognitive skill set to the image, which produces these annotations. We save those annotations in Cosmos DB. And then I create a search document that creates those projections. Here I see the text from the document, as well as all of the annotations in the form of metadata. And then on the left, where we broke everything down by those, linked ent those entities, uh, this is how um, we surface that um, in the search index as well, uh, right here. And that ends up in the search index. Now, let me show you what the, the cognitive skill set looks like. 
Okay, this is the cognitive skill set. It's really simple. A skill is simply has a name that's used to store uh, in the annotation. It has an action. In this case, we're just resizing uh, the image, uh, correcting its orientation, and uploading it for the website UI. And it has an input. So this is the, uh, the, the, the PDF image. And then annotations produce an output. These are the annotations that will be stored. Uh, and then it also serves as the input to other, to other skills as well. So here's the OCR skill that takes that resized image um, as an input and then uses the cognitive service uh, to, to recognize the text and, and so on and so forth um, with the handwriting recognition, computer vision, here linked entities, and the CIA cryptonyms uh, that, I, that I implemented as well. So it really is that easy to create a solution that can enhance the, the knowledge uh, inside of the documents you have and let you explore it um, in a new and interesting way. So. Now, what I just showed you was a problem that the CIA has. But imagine now for a minute how you could apply this cognitive search pattern to your own data. So whether it be analyzing legal documents, understanding engineering plans, or just extracting information from forms. So join us as we build together the solution to power new experiences and extract knowledge hidden in piles of unstructured data. Thank you very much.